Should we use beta blockers in the elderly after they have a heart attack? It just got more complicated. This is Healthcare Triage News. To the research, JAMA Internal Medicine, Association of Beta Blockers with Functional Outcomes, Death, and Rehospitalization in Older Nursing Home Residents After Acute Myocardial Infarction. Beta blockers are so standard of care after having a heart attack, I barely think about it when I hear about them. But they aren't used as much for older nursing home residents because of concerns over how much they might really benefit versus how much they might harm them. Look, this is the kind of thing I'd usually rail about as evidence of overuse. There are real harms to using beta blockers in old people. And for too long, we used them too widely in that group. We caused a lot of harm. This study, therefore, sought to look at how beta blockers were associated with mortality and rehospitalization as well as with functional harms in that specific age group. This is a cohort study of nursing home residents age 65 or older who had suffered from an acute myocardial infarction. The researchers used propensity scores to compare how those treated with beta blockers fared versus those not treated with beta blockers. The main outcomes of interest were independence and in activities of daily living, rehospitalization in the 90 days after their MI, and death. The cohort consisted of more than 11,000 women and more than 4,500 men, with an average age of 83 years. The propensity matching left an analysis of about 5,500 users of beta blockers versus about 11,000 non-users. Those who used beta blockers had about the same rate of rehospitalization as those who didn't, so no difference there. Those who used beta blockers had a significantly lower rate of death, a hazard ratio of 0.74, so a definite benefit to beta blockers there. Those who use beta blockers had a significantly higher rate of functional decline, odds ratio of 1.14, so a definite harm there. But this is where it gets interesting. Those who had moderate to severe cognitive impairment or severe functional dependency to begin with were even more likely to experience functional decline. The odds ratio was 1.32 to 1.34 but those with intact cognition or mild dementia showed no real decline. The same was true for people in the best or intermediate tertiles of functional independence. The benefit in mortality, though, was the same for all subgroups of functioning and cognition. In other words, the definite benefits seen for those over 65 who have an acute MI are the same and real for all people who take beta blockers. But the harms in terms of loss of functional independence seem confined to those who have at least moderate cognitive impairment or a severe functional dependence already. For the latter group, there are clearly trade-offs to using beta blockers. They gain a reduction in mortality, but at a real cost. Namely, they lose more of their ability to live independently. But if you're over 65, have little cognitive impairment, and moderate or less functional dependence, then treatment with beta blockers may extend your life and not really harm your independence. That's an important distinction and one worth discussing with your doctor. This is all fascinating to me because beta blockers in the elderly were one of those clear don't do it widely things before. We may need to reevaluate that, but we need randomized controlled trial evidence, not just cohort studies. We also need to know when to stop beta blocker therapy as people cognitively or functionally decline. More research is necessary. This is clearly a complicated issue. Healthcare triage is supported in part by viewers like you through patreon.com a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. Your support makes this show bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Jonathan Dunn, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe, Jonathan, and Sam. More information can be found at patreon.com slash healthcare triage.